Thank you for tuning in for another video from our 2022 EMTB shootout. Today we have Nick and Robert, two of the eight testers that came with us to Knoxville, Tennessee to put many of the best e-bikes from this year to the test. Today we're gonna to be going over the Trek Rail, which is one of the final contenders in our trail category. So the Trek Rail that we have on review here is the 9.9 .9 Axis model. It is a pretty spendy machine with pretty much all the bells and whistles, right? It retails for $13,799. It has RockShox suspension front and rear with a Zeb Ultimate with AirWiz up front, controlling that 160 mil of travel. Out back, we have the RockShox Super Deluxe also with AirWiz, and uh, we actually deleted the tire whiz, air whiz, because uh, we were having some issues getting that stuff to seat properly after we retaped the wheel, making it the bike with the second most batteries behind the Canyon Spectral on. Um, so, uh, all right, we've got a Bosch CX Gen 4 drive unit, 85 Newton meters of torque on that, uh, Bosch power tube, 750 watt hour battery, Bosch Kiox 300 display. This one is tucked nicely on the top tube and the Bosch Smart System controller up on the handlebars. SRAM XX1 Axis 12 Speed Eagle. We've got SRAM Code RSC brakes uh, and some Bontrager Line Pro carbon wheels. Size large was what we tested. The geometry sits with a 487 reach, 646 stack height, 448 chain stays and a 1,278 millimeter wheelbase with a 33 millimeter bottom bracket drop. We've got a 64.2 degree head tube angle and a 76.7 degree seat tube angle with the bike in the low slack position. All right, let's get into climbing performance. Nico, the XC guy, lead yeah. that off. I mean, it's a different bike than it was last year. Uh, it's a little less supple off the top, no matter what we did, messing with the shock whiz stuff, air whiz. I, I couldn't get this bike to really reliably give me traction on very gnarly square edge climbs. Uh, the, the Bosch system has the power, as we've said before, but this uh, you can't really just sit and spin. You really have to be active moving the bike over what you're climbing, which does help you get over stuff, but it's not quite as supple in the rear end and keeps your traction as much as some of the other bikes we have on test. I disagree. I had, I mean, I climbed what was probably the gnarliest thing I've ever climbed aboard this bike. Uh, the Trek has always been the Hill Climb Challenge winner uh, at all of our e-bike shootouts. And it is again this year, I think. Well, does the long back end help with that? I don't know, but I mean, even the, like the traction thing like that for me, you know, in my shock setup, and I thought it was plenty fine. The seat wasn't very comfortable. Yeah, I think like you're getting a lot of feedback through the seat for yeah. sure. Uh, but I think under the wheel, it's not so bad. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think it's a super plush, comfortable, grippy bike uh, when you're climbing it. But it's not not terrible. I mean, either. Drew's uh, championship win did prove us wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's just him. That's nothing we, to do with the skill level, no, of course. That's, it's all bike, no skill. Um, all right, so. Uh, moving away from climbing, uh, we'll touch a little bit on comfort and geo. Robert, uh, what, what were your thoughts on this? At 487 mil reach and with quite a high stack as well, at six foot two, it fits me pretty well. For a bike that you're trying to go fast on, it's the longest on test. Yeah. And you really feel that, uh, especially on the tighter terrain, you do need to give it a lot wider setup lines kind of push it around a little bit harder to get it around the tighter sure. corners that kind of pays dividends on the descents you do end up with a very stable kind of confidence inspiring bike as mm -hmm. much as i hate saying that i think it works pretty good unless you're riding super tech super yeah. tight stuff that's how i felt man it was it's stable but it doesn't make you feel comfortable is kind of how i would put it like i didn't feel i didn't jump on this bike like i did last year and instantly feel like oh this thing can handle any terrain i felt like it's a little bit harsh off the top. It's not doesn't quite have the grip that I would want out of this bike uh, to really support the long and low racy nature of it. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't think it's terrible off the top. Like uh, on the uh, the Rock Garden yeah. on Devil's Racetrack, 
it felt pretty good. Okay. It's just, again, it's similar to the Yeti in the Enduro category. I think you've got to push it a little bit before it really yeah, comes alive. That does make sense. Yeah, I think it's, to me, I think it's definitely more active, more supple than say like the Santa Cruz Heckler by a long shot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know that it's Levo soft, but uh, at the same time, I think that this bike, when you push it hard, uh, it does come alive. It is long for me, right? I, I love bikes with a 475 to 480 reach. Uh, at 487, this is quite a bit longer. Um, and when we got into trails like that one drier trail that, you know, I really wanted these guys to repeat this bike on. You'd kind of come in and then have to make these awkward off camber rights that were kind of fading away. And with that long front end being kind of out there trying to fight this bike back on those awkward transitions, I just didn't like it because I felt like I was sitting, you know, in the back seat of a car trying to steer the steering wheel rather than like kind of being centered or balanced or even up over the front of the bike. And that was like one of my biggest complaints about this bike is that long reach. Uh, and I think if I was going to, I still really like the rail. I just feel that the geometry is what has made this bike fall back places for me, several places, right? It's, it's won the yeah. last two years in a row. I feel like the lower spec models that didn't get the geo updates are what I would spend my money yeah. and, and buy. I almost feel like it needs a medium large size. So now you've got yeah. the medium that comes in at 450, 460 ish, mm -hmm. which is pretty short for There's, us. Way and, too big a jump. And then the, the, the large comes in at almost 490. And I think maybe I think, and, and yeah. XL is like 515 yeah. or so five, it's I mean they're massive jumps in size. I think size. that's probably a lot of what I was feeling on the downhills. You get kind of set up in this off the back of the bike instead of having your weight kind of centered over it. So it just tends to be maybe a harsher behind the bike ride. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a tough one, and I think you know we're I feel like the pendulum is swinging right now as as it does in in industries, right? And I think there's been so many years of people saying longer, lower, slacker, and I, I hope that we're kind of at this end of the swing and then people will start bringing it back. I, I don't we'll know. See. I, I can't believe that I'm at 5'11". I need to start riding size medium bikes yeah. to get the feel I want. Yeah. But a size medium in this bike is way too small. You know, I mean, there's other bikes that we have size mediums just because they're way too long, but at least that medium's a 465 to 470 yeah. range. Um, 450 is just, none of us could ride no, that. No, it's way too short. We're getting in the weeds here. A little bit. Integration. Overall, yes. Let's let's talk. So this is another Bosch system okay. with the updated controller. Yep. Kyox display. Yep. But the Kyox is in a much better spot, and this year we didn't knock it off with our knees every other corner. We did not. Yeah. It's, it definitely seems like it's a little better situated or, or locked yeah. in down there. It's not in that vulnerable spot up off the top of the stem. It's not quite as neatly integrated as the likes of the Specialized or the Rocky yeah, Mountain, yeah. where it's in the top tube, recessed, so you can't physically knock it. But I don't think the display is in a bad place. The controller, on the other hand. Again. Controller, yeah, we've had issues with multiple Bosch, the, the, that smart system controller. Uh, I don't know how, but it seems like it changes power modes sure. on the yeah. downhills regularly. It might just be through bumps. Yeah, like we we can't figure it out. Because this thing's too long to get our knees to this. Yeah, I mean, like you're not, <laughs> you're not descending with your thumb up here accidentally bouncing that. You know, your thumb's under there, but somehow it changes power modes. It does. Like, you set off on a downhill in turbo or EMTB mode, and then you round a corner to start pedaling, and it's an eco. And you're like, how, how did it get to eco? Because my thumb didn't hit it. Um, and even sometimes while climbing, I felt like, you know, if I was really working harder pedaling, I was like, well, maybe that could be my hand hitting it, but I really don't think so. So I, I just don't know about that, that Bosch system. They're big, they stick out a lot. I, we've had issues with them changing power modes on multiple bikes, um, so that's that. The Axis drivetrain worked great. Yeah, it's great. And I think the Bosch smart system's probably worth talking about. Like that EMTB mode is pretty awesome. Yeah, I it's mean, great. It, it, that all goes back to this bike being the hill climb champion, which it still possibly could be, unless you're trying to climb really tight switchbacks yeah. because mm -hmm. it's now so much longer. I don't know what Trek does with their Bosch like implementation because I don't. I mean, I don't think they're changing the tunes or anything. But dang, do these bikes freaking climb anything? It's unbelievable. Um, all right, who is the ideal consumer for this bike, Robert? Somebody who wants something that's quite an efficient all-day peddler, probably sits at the like similar height to me or maybe just under or slightly shorter than you guys. Yeah. 
or at least prefers an even shorter bike than you guys so that you get in that sizing kind of range perfectly, um, who just wants to go out and ride fairly wide open trails, I guess, for the most part. It's not like it can't go down a tight trail, but it's definitely not the ideal tool for it. I saw you charging down that rock garden and you looked more than comfortable. I mean, you were ripping on this thing. Yeah, it, it felt pretty good. It's, uh, it's not super sensitive. It's not like you feel like ultra cushioned from the trail, but there's plenty to push off of and it wasn't bottoming out or anything. It's, it's good, it's well controlled. Nick? Yeah, I think, I mean, like you said, you really have to push on this bike. It's a little bit clunky up in the top for me. Uh, I, you know, I weigh quite a bit less than you and I just couldn't get this shock set up right for me. Uh, and I felt like it was a little harsh, but once you do push on it and really push into some trails, it gets down to the mid stroke and feels okay. And it's very supportive. I just feel like you're not quite having enough feedback from the trail from it. All right, for me, I think climbing, absolutely a strong suit. Um, when you're seated, seated and pedaling, uh, putting in miles, comfortable bike, I think it does pretty well. If it was me buying a Trek rail, uh, I would buy a lower model rail to take advantage of last year's geometry because uh, it's a big enough issue for me to where I wouldn't want to, for my terrain and my riding style, get into such a long bike. I do absolutely think there are riders out there that will like a longer bike. And I mean, you know, people are asking for it. So, but I would love to see, like you said, either a medium large uh, or a closer gap, more sizes. But overall though, a solid bike, it's held together quite well other than the shock. Nothing's come loose, which is impressive. I mean, we- We haven't it, worked on this on bike. On previous Trek rails, we had some stuff yeah. come loose. This thing, it sounds like they've got that sorted. Bike stayed tight. Uh, yeah, nothing's come loose. It's still here and we beat on this bike quite a bit before it ever showed up So that there's a testament to that because a lot of bikes have fallen apart this week There it is guys there that is the Trek rail 9.9 .9 axis a, a, a Worthy candidate in this year's EMTB shootout. Please make sure you guys subscribe to the channel we got a lot more videos coming as we work our way into the grand finale episode here in Knoxville, Tennessee. So thanks very much for watching once again, and we hope to see you out on the trails.